everybody, it's Cindy with Little House Homestead here, and today we're going to talk about meat rabbits. Uh, meat rabbits are a great way to get into raising your own protein. Um, they're small, they're easily caged. Even if you live in an HOA or in a housing complex in a city, you can usually get away with rabbits because they don't make any noise. So where you can't get away with chickens clucking or ducks or something of that nature, you can usually get away with having rabbits. Um, so let's dive into rabbits and find out what is great about rabbits. Um, disclaimer, I don't currently have meat rabbits because I have so many rabbits in my yard that I'm just picking them off in the yard. Um, but I will be getting some in the spring to replace Fluffy Bunny and Sir Licks a lot. Um, because those were the rabbits that we had as a breeding pair that my children had named. So let's get into rabbits. Um, they're not pets, um, except for your breeding pair, obviously. Um, I had one breeding pair and we got rabbits, so many rabbits. We actually were giving them away. Um, they're very prolific. You can get eight or nine or 10 kits in a litter. So you've got a ton of little baby rabbits all over the place and they fill up your freezer very quickly. Um, so let's talk about some of the meat breeds that we have. And yes, I wrote it down because as I've warned you, I get sidetracked. Um, the first one we're gonna talk about is the New Zealand rabbit. It's a great top quality meat rabbit. Um, butcher weight at about eight weeks is four to five pounds. Um, you can let it go a little longer, it gets a little bit bigger, but these are some of the smaller rabbits that I've seen out there. Um, and then there's the Californian rabbit. Um, those are a great meat producer. They also have really good fur. So if you want fur for your mittens or inside of a coat or something of that nature, this is a really great rabbit. Um, four to five pounds at uh, about 10 to 16 weeks, uh, 24 weeks, about nine to 12 pounds. So you have to feed them a little longer, take care of them a little longer, but for such a short term, you really do get quite the return on your investment of time. Sorry, my allergies have been going nuts because the weather has been so windy here. Um, and then there's my personal favorite, the ones that we have raised, <coughs> uh, is the Champagne d'Argent. It's the oldest meat rabbit, uh, known to humans. They've been raising them for 40,000 years in little tiny cages, um, catching them. They come from France, obviously. Um, but you get about, uh, nine to 12 pounds live weight at 16 weeks. So it's kind of in the middle. You don't have to wait the 24 weeks, but you gotta wait a little more than eight. Um, so, you know, not a bad, and their fur is phenomenal. I just love their fur. It starts out black and then it goes into silver. Um, turns this really pretty color silver. So you get a dual purpose rabbit where you can use the meat and the fur. Um, and these are the ones that I know about. These are the breeds that I've dealt with a little bit. Um, there are two other meat rabbits that I don't know much about, um, the Palomino and the Florida White. Um, I would imagine because rabbits all mature at about the same speed, you'd get about the same weights, but I'm not gonna promise you anything because I just don't know enough about them. Um, anyways, when you go to buy your rabbits, Make sure that they've got clear eyes, no runny nose, um, that it's from a reputable breeder because you can get some pretty messed up rabbits. Make sure their feet are clean. They don't have uh, hair falling off them in places. Make sure that their bones aren't sticking out because they're underfed. Just make sure that you have a very healthy rabbit because going into this without a healthy stock, you're just shooting yourself in the foot before you even get started. Um, so, a male rabbit is a buck. 
a female is a doe. So think deer season when you're thinking rabbits because hey, deer make meat, rabbits make meat. Uh, their babies are called kits um, and they are itty bitty little things when they're first born. They're born with their eyes closed. They're completely defenseless. Um, so make sure that you, you know, pay attention to where they are. Um, also check their teeth when you buy them. I forgot almost because it's actually not written on my paper. Um, check the teeth. Their front teeth, the top ones should overlap the bottom ones a little bit, but otherwise the jaws should be in line. If they're not, there's something wrong with that rabbit. It can't eat properly and you're likely to have a lot of weight loss or other health related problems because they can't eat and get the nutrients they need. Last week was feed calculations. I'm going to tell you flat out, I have never made my own rabbit feed. I just buy rabbit pellets because they take such a specific mix. Um, when you go to pick up your rabbits, take some cat carriers, keep them separate from each other. Do not put the male and female together unless you want baby rabbits in about, I don't know, 32 days or so. Um, don't put them in together unless you want them breeding. Um, they need separate cages. They need to be transported separately, not just for safety, but also so that you don't end up with rabbits when you don't want them. Because rabbits, they breed and their pregnancy is 28 to 35 ish days. So you can actually plan out when the kits are born based on that. So that if you want to have them maybe over a weekend, maybe you got a, a week off coming up, you can plan so that the babies are born when you can take better care and pay more attention to them. Rabbits are very fragile. Their spines break at the drop of a hat. Um, don't be rough with them. Uh, don't drop them. <clears throat> My daughter accidentally dropped a rabbit once. It was a meat rabbit, so it was going in the pot anyways, but she was absolutely devastated because its spine shattered and it landed on its feet. So dropping a rabbit is very deadly to the rabbit and it usually results in a culling. So be really gentle with your rabbits when you pick them up and you're going to carry them. Don't grab them by the ears. That is not how you pick them up. That is just not true. You pick them up, you put them like a, you would carry a football down a field, tuck it in, put its head under your arm so that its head is facing out behind you. And that's gonna prevent some of the, the nipping. It's gonna make the rabbit feel safe because its body is supported. And because they're so fragile, they are very careful about how their bodies are supported. When they're scared, they scratch and they bite. Um, just like any other animal that's not used to being handled, you can make them more used to being handled for your breeding pair, but don't do it with the ones you're gonna eat because you'll get attached. Um, Hutches, I'm going to put a link on here in the description to a hutch by Home Depot, or not Home Depot, um, Tractor Supply. They've got a hutch. I've got um, some plans, a link to some plans for a ch uh, rabbit tractor, kind of like a chicken tractor, but it's for rabbits. Um, so you can actually do rabbit tractors. And then on MeWe and Facebook, I will put some information about uh, building your own hutches, if you want to build them from scratch, some hutch ideas, um, and also some butchering ideas on how to set up a good butcher station. Don't do like me, I cut my thumb butchering one the other day. It was an accident, um, but accidents happen and it was a little too dark to be butchering. Um, but he was tasty. <laughs> um, anyways, rabbits have to live separately. Uh, you cannot put your female and your male in together. Um, once the female is bred, she will become very aggressive toward the male or he may become overly aggressive to her and she will miscarry. So they have to be separated. You put them in the day you want to breed them. They're in there for maybe 10 minutes, really. And then he falls off, goes to sleep like, you know, normal. And uh, then you've got little baby rabbits in 28 to 35 days. If she won't breed, it, Take her out, wait a day or two, put her back in. Um, but don't go over 15, 20 minutes in the cage. If they, Sometimes the female will attack the male. And this was one of my things that I learned to use welding gloves for. Um, you have to get her out of there. She'll kill him. So get her out of there, 
put her in the other pen, back in her pen for a couple days. Never put him in her pen. Always put her in his pen because that's she's very territorial and she will kill him. Um, so put her in his pen so that way the breeding gets done and then you put her back in her pen. You're going to want to get a little litter box. It's actually a litter nesting box. It's not a cat litter box, um, but it's got high sides. The babies sometimes fall out of them, but she'll have the babies in there. Rabbits do not pick up their young and put them back in the nest. So you need to check on them every single day and make sure the babies are in the nesting box. Um, otherwise you may lose your baby kits. Um, so that's something to be very aware of once you do have babies. Um, when you're designing and setting up their pens, you need to account for weather. Rabbits are very weather sensitive. Um, they don't like full sun. They don't like full shade. They don't like wind. They don't like hot weather. They don't like cold weather. So rabbits are finicky. Um, in the summer, get two liter bottles, get a couple of them, put them in the freezer, filled up three quarters of the way with water. And then when it's hot, you can put the bottle on its side in their cage and they will lay up against the water bottle and keep their bodies cool. You can put a fan on low to blow across them, but don't put any fans on high. Don't put them in extreme wind. Don't Definitely don't put them out in the sun for long periods of time with no shade. Um, rabbits will self-regulate and go in and out of shade. So if you've got a rabbit tractor, you can go ahead and let them go in and out of the shade. Park it somewhere where it gets a little bit of both so they can regulate their temperature easier. Rabbits are really bad at that. Uh, they don't like rain. Do not leave them out in the rain. Put a cover over them. But they also don't like to be moist. Uh, so if you've got a cover over them, um, you're going to have to open it up and air it out and make sure that there is no moisture or condensation building up in the pen. Now, when you look at some of the designs for rabbit pens, you'll notice that the floors are actually like a hardware cloth and the poop falls through. And then usually you put like a drip pan underneath to catch the urine. Rabbit manure is the best thing for your garden. You will never have a better garden than when you have rabbits. Um, it's just absolutely wonderful for their pens, to empty the pens into the garden. You don't have to compost it down like you do with chickens. Um, so you can actually mix it right into the soil and it degrades in there and feeds the plants immediately. So you get a little bit of a benefit for your garden with rabbits that you don't get with chickens where you have to wait about a year for their manure to compost down. Um, so that is one of the really wonderful things. Um, Make sure that you give them clean water every single day. Rabbits cannot digest food unless they have a lot of water. So you have got to make sure that their water bottle is full. And in hot weather, you may have to fill it two, three, four times a day. Um, I was living in the Central California area when we had rabbits and it would get up to 117, 123 degrees during the summer. And I probably filled those water bottles you know, half a dozen times a day. Um, so definitely make sure they have water. They cannot, they will die without water, even for a few hours. So it's not something where you can say, oh, I'll go get it in a minute. No, if you think about it and you're, you've got it on a schedule to go get your rat, rabbit some water, get them water. Um, rabbits will poop in one area. They don't poop all over their pen. So you know, underneath their pen, it's all going to be dirty in one area, but they have, if you put a crock in there with food, I've noticed that they're more likely to poop in the crock. Um, so what I did was I got an automatic rabbit feeder. Um, you can put a little more food in there. They can eat at will and they can't poop in it, which is a wonderful thing for saving food because you have to throw away the food that they go to the bathroom in. So it's not as much fun. Um, Pregnant rabbits need different nutritional requirements than non-pregnant rabbits. Um, so obviously you're going to want to increase their protein and their fats and things like that. And they do have rabbit feed for pregnant rabbits. So make sure that you get some that is appropriate for them. So that way you get good healthy kits. <clears throat> Sorry, it's just absolutely horrible. Um, 
Make sure that when you refill the water bottles once a day, that you take a bottle brush and swirl out the, the water bottles as well. You don't want algae growing in there because rabbits are very susceptible to diseases and you don't want them to catch one. You want good, healthy breeding stock. Um, so that is rabbits in a nutshell. I'm sorry, I don't have any at the moment. In the spring though, I will show you the cages that I get built. Um, as soon as I find out what um, sensor tube allows on butchering videos, I will do a butcher video if I am allowed to. Um, I've got a couple emails out to some of the other homestead channels to see about that. And I will um, get that information to you guys as soon as possible. Anyhow, if you liked this video, please like and subscribe. And remember that I will put extra information on the Facebook and Mewe pages. And I hope y'all have a lovely evening. Thank you.